Welcome to another um, AP Stats uh, instructional video by Mr. Hardy. Uh, what I want to do, this is a, a practice test uh, that we did in class. So most people watching the video should be relatively familiar with the video. So I'm just going to, I mean the problem, I'm just going to explain a little bit of the problem real quick. So if you read through this, what's going on is that we have a box in each corner of the room and one of the boxes has been randomly uh, uh, placed placed in, in the box the random box has been randomly selected and we put explosives in just one of them okay so then what we want to do is we want to bring in a sensor into the room and see if the sensor can find the box with the, the explosives so the question is, is that, well, how do you write the hypotheses? So we want to see uh, if there was success, if the, if the sensor works. So what we're going to say is, you know, does it work better than just random chance? So if we walked into the room and just guessed, the probability uh, would, that we would get it right would be 1 out of 4, or 25%. So the sensor would have to do better than that in order for us to say, well, there's something else is going on, something technical or systematic is going on. So anyway, to save some time, I wrote the hypotheses here. So the sensor detects the presence of explosives 25% of the time is our null hypotheses. And then we say the sensor detects the presence of explosive more than 25% of the time this is what we want to prove. We want to see if there's evidence. Okay, so before we, or to do that, we're going to do a z-test. So we want to check the conditions. And here, what I'm going to say is first, uh, you know, what they do is they do 50 trials. So each, I think, each trial. Test. Each test or trial is the wording they use uh, is independent. Um, of the others, okay. We it, it seems reasonable to assume that uh, you know because I don't think from one test to another, there's no residue or anything left over. I'm not sure how you would think that one test would impact the other. Look, looks a lot like flipping a coin to me. So in a way, we already have independence. Okay. So, But the 10% rule uh, does not apply because this is an experiment. So we're not we're not sampling from the population. Uh, however, we do we do randomly sign the you know so the the explosives are randomly assigned to to a box to one of the four boxes. Okay? So, I think we've got independence taken care of. Now, the next thing is is the success failure. Condition. And here we want n times p which is 50 uh, times 0.25 which is 12.5, that's greater than or equal to 10, and then NQ would be 50 times 0.75, uh, so what is that? That's um, uh, 25, that's, <laughs> I'll just do this in my head, 25 plus 12, right, so that's uh, 37.5. 
So that's greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so this implies that the sample of 50 is large enough. Okay, so we have our conditions, they're met. So let's see if I can write this out. The conditions are met, are satisfied. So we can proceed with a Z test using, I should say using, not with, using the normal model for the sampling distribution of p hat. Okay? So what we would expect if we sampled lots of times? Well, we would have a model here. Okay, looks reasonably normal. It's always risking that. So what's the center? So we could say, um, maybe I should do this. It's kind of wordy. Let's take this out. Let's just say, um, with a mu at the center of the model for p hat would be 0.25, the hypothesized value. Actually, let me do this. P equals 0.25. Okay, so it always it's always um, the null hypothesized value because we're assuming that's true. So it'd be 0.25. Okay, now the standard deviation of p hat. We're going to use the model, so that would be 0.25 times 0.75 divided by um, 50. Okay, I think I got a calculator that'll do that. Let's see. Clear. Um, it's the square root of all that, right? So it's 0.25 times 0.75 equals divided by 5 o equals, and then we take the square root of that, so 0 0.061. Okay, so 0 0.061. Okay, so what did we get for a p hat? Well, we get p hat equals, let's go back up. See, p, p hat doesn't even come into play until now. So 18. The sensor worked 18 times. So that would be 18 out of 50. So uh, just double check 18 divided by 50.36. Makes sense. 0 0.36. So the question is okay, 0 0.36. So that looks better. So the question is where is it over here on the model? How far over? So our measurement is standard deviations. So we would say that z equals p hat minus p, the hypothesized value, divided by the standard deviation of p hat. So that's going to be 0 0.36 minus 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.061. OK, so back to the calculator, clear. 0.36 minus 0.25 equals divided by 0.061 equals so it looks like 1.8 standard deviations away 1.80 oh. let's just double check 1.803 okay so one, two, three, one, two, three, 
not a perfect diagram, but okay, right there. So we want to find this value. So this is this is uh, p hat equals 0.36, and the corresponding z is 1.8. And so uh, the question is, what is our p value? Is it small enough? So we say the p value is equal to the probability that p hat is greater than 3.36 given the null hypothesis is true and that's equal to the probability that z is greater than 1.8 and that's equal to <laughs> normal CDF of 1.8 out to infinity and I'm going to have to do that on my calculator, so just give me a second. Second distribution, number two, 1.8, comma, 9999999. And I get 0 0.0359. So I get 0 0.0359. Nine, not nine, nine, three, zero, two, six, five, five. So that's what approximately three point six percent. So pretty small. If we used an what we call an alpha level, uh, which I know I haven't shown you yet, but if we say alpha is five percent then uh, this is pretty small. This is less than 5%. Okay, so we're ready. Now we're ready to interpret just this. We would say it's small. So here's what you want to write. The p-value of 3.6% is small. So we reject the null hypotheses, HO. There is evidence that, and what do we write? Well, we go all the way up to the alternative. We're rejecting the null, so we take the alternative. That there's evidence that the sensor detects the presence of explosives more than 25% of the time. Okay, so there's that the sensor detects um, pins flaking out on me. Detects the presence. of explosives more than 25% of the time. Okay, so that's putting the context in it. So that's all you have to do. Okay, so you're done. That's all you have to do. Now, a follow-on question is, what does the p-value mean? So, we would say that the, the p-value is the probability of the sensor working, say, working, being successful, uh, what is it, 36 percent of the time, which is that's what it did, given that it's true uh, success rate is 
25% of the time. So the probability is 3.6%. So the probability of the sensor working 36% of the time, given that it should only work 25% of the time, is 3.6. So since this is pretty small, you would sort of say, well, then it shouldn't happen. But it did happen. So therefore, the null hypothesis is wrong. Okay, let's move on. So now we know it's greater than 25%, but how much greater? So what we'd like to do is create a confidence interval to find out how much better it is. So uh, fortunately, here, the conditions have been checked above. So we can proceed with a confidence interval. Okay, so remember a const, uh, an, um, confidence interval is an estimate plus or minus wait <laughs> that was wrong getting ahead of myself plus or minus a margin of error okay so in this case our estimate is p hat which we already know is 36% so the com we compute the margin of error, saying z star and um, times the square root of p q over n. Okay, so here this is 0.36 plus or minus, and uh, let's see, we want a 95% confidence interval. So let's just double check real quick if this is a normal model. It's kind of ugly, but assume it is. This is 0.95, so this would be 0 0.025, 0.025. So inverse norm of 0 0.025 would equal z star. Okay, so if we go to the calculator, turn it on, second distribute, and we say, um, go down to inverse norm and put in 0 0.025, we get 1.95999, so 1.960, one let's use that, 1.960. All right, now plus or minus, oh, and I made a little mistake here, this would be p hat q hat, so this is 0.36 times 1 minus 0.36, never hurts to double check, 0.64 divided by sample size of 50. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to do this in a couple steps. So uh, first, I'm going to do the square root. The square root of square root of 0.36 times 0.64 divided by 50 equals, and then times 1.960. So I get I get 0.36 plus or minus um, 0. 1, 3, 3. It's good to go out three decimal places. Okay, so um, 0 0.360 plus 0 0.113. So up the upper end, at the upper end, we get 0 0.473. At the lower end, Uh, 
0.36 minus 0 0.233. 0.227. I just realized, I think I typed in the wrong number here. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm pretty sure I made a mistake right here. So I'm going to cut that out. 0.36 plus 0.133. Yeah. It's 0. Sorry. Point. Ah, this thing is so weird. Okay. It's 0. 0.493. Okay. So we are. 95% confident that the true that doesn't look too good that the, the true success rate of the sensor, uh, let's say detecting explosives, is between twenty two point seven per cent and 49.3% interesting uh, because that includes 0.25 doesn't it okay explain what it means to be 95% confident so what we would say is that if we took many samples of 50. If we took many samples of 50 and produced many confidence intervals We expect ninety five percent of them, the confidence intervals, to capture the true sensor success rate. Okay? That's what we mean by 95%. Okay, now, so based on the 95% confidence, is there evidence that the sensor is effective? Well, based on the confidence interval, no. It's, it, there's a problem because the confidence interval says that the sensor should operate between, was it 22.7 to 49.3? 7% to 49.3%. Uh, the problem is, is that 25%, the null hypothesis, is in this confidence interval. Okay? So to reject the null hypothesis, you'd want this to be, uh, you'd want the confidence interval to not include 25%. Okay, so here, uh, probably the simplest thing to say is no. Um, the the confidence interval includes um, twenty five percent. So there 
there is no evidence. that the sensor um, up is, is more successful. Than 25 percent. Okay, so the problem the problem is is that we have a large confidence interval. We use a 95 percent confidence interval. Okay, we probably should have used a smaller confidence interval. So, this last problem says the company wants to repeat the experiment, but this time they want to use a 90% confidence interval with a 5% margin of error. If we go back and we look up here for this calculation, up here, I didn't do it, but the, well, yeah, I did, right here. The margin of error is 13%. 13.3%. That's a very large margin of error. So it kind of makes sense that the, um, or we're not surprised that such a big uh, confidence interval includes the hypothesized value. So what if we used, did this over? So I'm combining that with finding, well, what sample size should we use? Okay, so what we know is the margin of error is equal to Z star times uh, p q over n. So this time we want a 5% margin of error and we want this time uh, only 90% confidence so this is 0 0.05 so z would be inverse norm of 0.05 and that's going to be, turn this on, um, 0 0.05, 1.645. 1 so 1.645. So we get 1.645. And then here, we're going to go ahead and use 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. 75. If you're if you're unsure unsure, or you could it, actually there's all kinds of things you could use here. You could use 0 0.5, 0 0.5. You could use uh, 36. You could use what we got from the sample. Uh, but let's make it easy on ourselves. Let's just use the hypothesized value. Okay, so we have that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite this so I don't mess up that um, equation. I don't like to mess that stuff up. I teach too much algebra. So I want to make sure there's a you can easily see what happens. 0.25 times 0.75 over n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides to undo to undo that square root. So I got 0 0.05 squared equals 1.645, a lot of students forget to square this, times 0.25, actually so do I sometimes, okay, over n. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply both sides by n, and I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.05 squared, 0 0.05 squared. And so the n's cancel, and these cancel over here. Um, so I've lost space, so I would get n equals 1.645 squared times 0.25 times 0.75 divided by 0.05 squared. So let me see if I can do that without making a mistake. 1.645 squared times 0.25 times 0.75 equals divided by 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 so I get 2 202.95 so n should be no less than 200 and three samples. 
Okay, so we should use a sample size of 203 to have a 5% margin of error with 90% confidence. Okay, so uh, that's it. I'm sorry it took so long. It's a lot of sloppy work in places, but at least there's one approach to doing the problem. Okay, so good luck with that.